Solomon's not applied for open space in 2013 and back then we had only really performed for a few small festivals and done our own promotions mainly in London or so in Cambridge and I think the main thing that being selected in the first place for open space did for us was increase our confidence. We're here now working on our penultimate project of this three-year period and we're very excited and really lucky to be able to actually perform the end result in the June festival in 2016 which we didn't dream would be possible when we first applied for this for this residency. Well it's such a treat being here this week. Um, there are five of us, there's me and Mira and of course the lovely people at Aldborough and we're kind of given free reign to use the wonderful space of the Britain Studio. Molmazzo is a garden in Italy, about 50 kilometres north of Rome, and it was created in the 16th century by an aristocrat, partly as a kind of love temple to his wife who died. And it's filled with sculptures. It's not just a garden, it's a kind of a sculpture park. And the sculptures are completely extraordinary, made from the volcanic rock in the region. And they, they represent characters and animals and structures, some of them from mythical stories, some of them from classical antiquity. But I think it was the fact that they were sort of lost in the undergrowth for a long time that yeah. appealed to you and to me. We want to make it very clear and give that sense of the garden to people, even if they've only read one line. It's not about reading program notes. I think we, we want to convey that quite simply, but very sensually and quite directly. So the two key factors in this, in this garden for me really are the stone, the sculpture, and the vines that hid all these sculptures. And so those are the two things that we're abstracting and bringing a visual element. And then because, as James has said, these pieces, these madrigals, are sculptural, we're actually using the consorts and presenting each one of them as, as sculptures. The music we've chosen, they're all madrigals from roughly the same time that the garden was created, slightly later. And they're all madrigals from the, the sort of late period of the Italian and it's kind of a twilight between the Renaissance and the Baroque. And the magicals you see that were written around this time by composers like Gesualdo, Sigismondo d'India, Marenzio, Monteverdi, Jacques de Vert, Michelangelo Rossi, they really pushed the boundaries of what you could do with five voices singing together. Compositionally, we're doing something quite strange because we're using new elements which are right with these very old pieces. But we're looking at these new elements as the vines, as the creepers that hold or, or disguise. Very extravagant music to match extravagant sculptures, which are sort of shrouded in greenery and moss and gradually uncovered. <laughs> 